Hi, this is uh, Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 3, Video 4. Today's objective is be able to solve projectile motion problems. Let's take a look at the first problem. A batter hits a baseball so that it leaves the bat at a speed V0 equals 37 meters per second, at an angle alpha naught equals 53.1 degrees, use G equals 9.8 meters per second squared. So here is a picture on the bottom here, tells you V0 and alpha naught. First thing, write down what is given to you. V0 and alpha naught. You can solve for V0 x equals V0 cosine alpha naught and Vy, V0 y equals V0 times sine alpha naught. And you set original position equals to zero. X0 equals to Y0 equals to zero. Find the position of the ball. Position of the ball is what is X and Y? X equals V0 x times t. Substitute time t equals to 2 seconds. You have 44.4. Y equals V naught Y t minus 1 half G t squared. That is because A Y equals negative G. So you substitute time equals to 2, you get 39.6 meters. Next one, to find magnitude, direction, velocity, we have to find components of velocity. Using the equation V x equals V naught x, that is because A y equals v naught y minus gt that is because velocity uh, changes by negative 9.8 uh, meters per second every second so that you will have uh, the value for vx and the vy at times equal to 2. to find a magnitude we use pythagorean theorem to find a direction we use second to 10. so that's the magnitude and direction of a velocity take a look Direction is 24.2 degrees. That means the dart is still traveling upward toward its peak. Find the time when the ball reaches the highest point of its flight and its height h at that point. Well, at the highest point, it's a vertical velocity equals to zero. That is a very convenient fact for us to use. So Vy equals V naught Y minus G times T up, that equals to zero. We solve for t up equals v naught y divided by g. By the way, that is a very convenient equation for you to remember. That gives you 3.02 seconds. The height is the y position. So to find height, we simply substitute time equals to 3.02 seconds. So y equals to uh, substitute a value, you have 44.7 meters. Next one, find horizontal range. Horizontal range is the x direction, v naught x times t. This t is the total time, so it's double of t up because projectile is symmetrical. The time for total time is double of the t up. You get 134 meters. Example 3.8, the height and the range of projectile for the general expression. So for a projectile launched with speed v naught and angle alpha naught, you'll have to find the maximum height. Again, at a maximum height, velocity in the y direction equals to zero. So we can use that equation to find y max. v naught y equals v naught sine alpha naught. So we need to um, square the both v naught and the sine alpha. Horizontal range. That's the x direction, vx times t total. vx equals v naught cosine alpha naught t total is 2 times t up. Remember, t up is v naught y divided by g. So that's v naught y is v naught sine alpha naught. So you multiply that by 2. Now substitute this vx and t total. You will have r equals to vx times t total. This is the value of t total. v naught squared cosine alpha naught times 2 times sine alpha naught, that is sine 2 alpha naught divided by 2g. These equations, I recommend you to remember those because you're going to use those very uh, often in uh, projectile problems. Now, for a given v naught, what is the value alpha naught will give you a maximum height. So take a look at the maximum height equation. Y max depends on alpha naught through sine alpha naught. So whenever sine alpha naught is maximum, y has maximum. Sine alpha naught is maximum when alpha naught is 90 degrees. 
Now, what is the value of alpha naught when you have a maximum horizontal range? Take a look at the horizontal range equation. So when the sine two alpha naught is the maximum, R has the maximum range. So when two alpha naught equals 90, 90 degrees, that means the alpha naught is 45 degrees. You'll have a maximum range. So this is at a 45 degree launching angle, you'll have greatest range. So this purple is 45 degrees. This uh, green one is 60 degrees. The blue one is 90 degrees. As you can see, the 60 and 90 about have the same range. This is because complementary angles have the same range. So for example, 40 degrees and 50 degrees will have the same range. Similarly, 25 degrees and 65 degrees have the same range. Next example. You toss a ball from your window 8 meters above the ground. When the ball leaves your hand, it is moving at 10 meters per second at an angle 20 degrees below horizontal. How far horizontally from your window will the ball hit the ground? Ignore air resistance. So because it's below the window, so alpha is negative. Write down what's given. So V naught X again equals V naught times cosine negative 20 gives you 9.4 meters per second. V naught Y equals V naught times sine negative 20 will give you a negative 3.4. That is because the initial vertical velocity is downward. So initial, initial position is at origin. Horizontal distance, x equals v naught x times t. We know v, v naught x, we don't know t. So how do we solve t? We use the y components to determine the time. So y equals v naught y t minus 1 half gt squared. Substituting what is given, this is quadratic equation. Uh, you can plug this into your calculator to solve for t. T equals to, neg you'll have two values, negative, that's invalid, so T equals to 0.98 seconds, substitute T into your X equation, you'll have the X uh, distance equals 9.2 meters. Another example, whoops, the zookeeper and the monkey. The monkey escapes from the zoo and climbs a tree. After failing to entice the monkey down, the zookeeper fires the tranquilizer dart directly at the monkey. The clever monkey lets go at the same instant. The dart leaves the gun barrel, intending to land on the ground and escape, show that the dart always hits the monkey, regardless of dart's muzzle velocity, provided that it goes to gets to the monkey before it hits the ground. So here is a diagram. So initial, uh, the dart angle is uh, fired at V naught and at alpha direction is alpha naught. The distance, horizontal distance between the dart and the monkey is D. The height of the monkey is H. So uh, according to Sokotoa, H equals D times tangent alpha naught. So for the dart to hit the monkey, the position of the dart and the position of the monkey has to be the same at time t. So for the dart at time t, its position, uh, the x equals d, that, that d equals v naught cosine alpha naught times t. The position for the y for the dart equals v naught sine alpha naught, that d y times sine alpha naught times t. For the monkey, the monkey's x position always is d, Monkey's y position is its height minus the, the distance the monkey falls in time t, which is one half gt squared. Now we know the x of the dart and the x of the monkey are the same. We just have to prove the y of the dart is y of the monkey. So we have to find y of the dart. To find y of the dart, we have to solve for time of the uh, time, time from the x of the dart. So we solve for time from the x of the dart, which is d, divided by v naught cosine alpha naught. So y dart equals v naught sine alpha t times t. t is d divided by v naught cosine alpha naught minus 1 half gt squared. See this v naught and v naught cancels. Sine alpha naught divided by cosine alpha naught give you tangent alpha naught. d times tangent alpha naught, that is h. So the y dart is h minus 1 half g times t squared. 
And this Y dart is the same as the Y monkey. They are always the same. That's why the dart can always hit the monkey. Here is a diagram. Let's see why is that like intuitively from the diagram. This the dotted line shows without gravity. Without gravity, the monkey is not going to fall. The monkey is going to stay here. Without gravity, the dart is going to travel a straight line. So the dart is going to hit the monkey without gravity. However, with the gravity, the monkey is going to fall down. Right? The monkey is going to fall. How far is the monkey fall in the time t? The monkey is going to fall one half gt squared because the monkey's initial velocity equals to zero. So how far is the dart going to fall? This is without gravity. So dart is going to fall this distance. This distance is also one half gt squared. How did I get that? Because y, the position y for the dart equals to v naught yt. What is v naught yt? v naught yt is this distance. is from here to the ground. That's v naught yt minus one half gt squared. This distance is how far the dart will fall. As you can see, they are the same. This is at time t equals to 1. This is how far the monkey has falls. This is time at t equals to 2. The dart fall, the monkey fall. They are always the same. This is the time t3. The dart has fallen this distance. This is the dart, the distance the monkey has falls. So in the time t, both monkey and the dart falls the same. That's why the dart will always hit the monkey. Check your understanding. So in the last example, suppose tranquilizer, tranquilizer dart has relatively low muzzle speed so that it will reach at the highest point before it hits the monkey, but it still hits the monkey before it reaches to the ground. Right? When a dart is at point P, at its highest point, where is the monkey? Is the monkey going to be at A, B, or C? Well, remember we talked about the dart falls this distance from the dashed line to here. The monkey will fall the same distance. The dart will fall here. The monkey will fall here. The same distance, which is point A. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.